Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We're looking at the I squared C peripheral on the MSP430, and we're getting ready to start writing our first program. But before we can do that, we need to find a slave that we can talk to. Remember, I squared C does not work uh, with you can't run it without having somebody on the receiving end. So in UART, we were able to just send characters out and we could look at the packet using the oscilloscope or logic analyzer. And we were even able to send it up to a terminal window. Uh, same thing with SPY. We were able to hook a logic analyzer on it and watch packets transmit out. And we were able to actually even shift information into a receiver by putting a jumper uh, between the master out and the master in lines. With I squared C, you can't do that. And you can't even configure the two I squared C's together on the MSP430 because of those uh, pesky pull-up resistors. Remember, those things only work when you have uh, the ports configured as an input. And so since we have to have a bi-directional pin, uh, the pull-up resistors will be basically turning on or off uh, depending on whether an input or an output, so it doesn't work. So we need to find something out there that is, number one, an I squared C slave, and number two, very simple so that we can learn how to get this, this I squared C program up and running without being overwhelmed with the complexity of the actual slave itself. So what we are going to do is we're going to use this uh, Adafruit real-time clock uh, slave, okay? So it's PFC 8523, and this is, that's what it looks like, okay? <laughs> and it it's a real-time clock, meaning that as long as it has power, it basically tracks time, okay? So once you plug it in to either you have a battery or you provide it a power supply, it just starts counting seconds, hours, days, uh, even years, and that's cool. So that at any given time in a, in a system, you can go to this thing and say, hey, what time is it? And it will spit it out in, in time, not just like a binary counter. It'll say, oh, since we powered up, you know, seven days have passed, two hours and three minutes and five seconds. <clears throat> so this is how you can build like a real a clock. So that, that's called a real time clock, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, uh, the good thing about it, though, is that it's relatively simple uh, to use. It is just a, it's configured as a slave. It has a hard coded slave address and it has 20 registers that can be read or written to. And so, you know, it does have some complexity to it, but we don't need to understand all the complexity <clears throat> in order to get this running. Uh, we just want to look at a couple of the registers. Now, the key thing about it is this is from a company called Adafruit, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but the chip on it that we care about is, is from a company called NXT. And it, the chip is actually also called PFC8523. The reason that's important is because the chip is the one that provides the data sheet that we care about, okay? So here is, if you go out to Adafruit, you know, if you're taking one of my classes, we're gonna provide this for you. Uh, if you're not, uh, you can go out and purchase this. They're only $4.95. And this is what they look like. So it's just this tiny little chip and it comes with a pin header right here. Um, and you, you can see that it's pretty pretty small. And you know it gives you kind of the overview of, of the way it works. Uh, here's mine. Um, <clears throat> notice that I mounted the pin header facing down. Uh, and that's, you would think that for what we're doing, you'd want to have the pin header standing or coming up so that you could see what's going on, but you actually mount it going down and it's because it's, that's how you plug it into like say a breadboard, or if you were going to make another printed circuit board, you'd want to have it so that you could just plug it, plug it in. <clears throat> so that's why the pins are, are supposed to go at the bottom, but it's, if you like it on the other side, uh, you can switch it. But anyway, the reason they don't put it, they don't mount that thing for you is because it pokes holes in the package. So when you order this thing, that you, they come separately and you just have to put them in here <clears throat> and solder them. But you can see right away, it's like, okay, so there's five pins on here. There's ground and power. There's SDA. I recognize that. SCL. And then something else, SQW. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to use it. The way that it works with power is you can power this off of a battery, okay, well, a coin cell battery, or you can provide it power from the pin. And so what we're gonna do when we do our code is we'll just grab ground and VCC from the MSP430 launch pad board, and then we'll jumper over to these two things. So we'll have to bring in four wires in order to power this and communicate with it, but that's just how it works. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so let's take a look at the data sheet 
And what I'm going to do is this data sheet's 78 pages, <laughs> but there's just a couple highlights in here that I'll show you. So I'll kind of jump through uh, this thing. Okay, so here you go. It's NXT. It's got I squared C bust. That's kind of the the trademark or the the standard image for it that says this is a it adheres to the true I squared C specification, and that's great. Okay, uh, Pete, you see the part number here, and so you just kind of look through this and pluck out some of the key features. Um, a couple of the key features, you know, it provides year, month, day, minutes, seconds. Wow. It has a 32 kilohertz uh, crystal on it. You know, these 32 kilohertz crystals, you're going to see those everywhere for the rest of your life. That's just a standard frequency that comes out of it. Uh, of interest, though, is it's communicated with an I-squared C bus that can go up to 1,000 kilobits per second. So this thing can support a megabit per second I-squared C. So this thing can haul. Uh, that for us, that means that, geez, we could actually choose SM clock one megahertz and actually blast this thing as fast as we can uh, and, and everything would be fine. So that's kind of what's important over here. Open drain interrupt or clock output pins. Oh, I finally know what open drain means. So that's kind of cool. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to scroll through things. So I hope you don't get car sick. I'm just going to stop on a few of the important things. Here is the first thing that kind of comes up uh, block diagram of this device. Notice there's just a whole bunch of stuff going on. You got crystals and you got all these block diagrams. But really what we care about is we're going to treat this as a system. So we just need to know basically how does this operate and then how do you interface with it? We know it's I squared C and then kind of where are the registers and, and register addresses that we need. Okay, so then let's go to uh, <clears throat> the next kind of critical thing is in section eight, you have the register overview. So now look at this. This is what we were talking about. This device has... 20 internal registers and they are addressed from 00 up to 13 hex. And you're like, 13, what's that? Well, that's 20 decimal. So these are the the um, the registers in here. And more interestingly in this picture, it also tells you that you have an auto incrementing feature with wraparound. And you go, what does that mean? Well, remember in I squared C, if you send this the address, uh, the register address, let's say you, you send it 11 hex, and you read from it, you would get the information at this address. Then if you didn't stop the message and you you just acknowledged it, the slave would then auto increment its register counter and it would then send you the information at one, two. Then if the master didn't stop the message and simply acknowledged it, it would send out the information at one, three. Then if the master didn't acknowledge it, it would wrap around and go back to register zero. So this allows you to, it's, it's kind of cool. You could just continually read this thing forever in one message, which would be stupid. Uh, but, but anyway, that's how it works. So that's why I mentioned before, it's like you got to look at the data sheet, figure out what the addresses are, and does it have this auto incrementing feature? I, I, most I2C devices do. Okay, so now here's the interesting thing about this is you have, here's the register uh, kind of description. This looks just like the MSP430 data sheet. It's got, here's the address of the register. Here's what they do. The first one are, are control registers and they have all these bits in here. I don't know what they are. I would have to go look that up. Here's the ones that we kind of care about. Uh, registers three, four, and five, even six, seven, eight, and nine. These are time. And so you can go out, when you plug this thing in, when you power it up, it'll start counting, okay? So it starts counting at zero and it'll count. And after in this, the, every second, this second field will increment and it'll go up to, to 59. Everything is encoded in binary coded decimal, meaning that it's in a form that's ready to be directly read out and converted into like clock format. So you have the seconds, and as that you know gets to 59, obviously it'll roll over and go back to zero, and then the minute it'll increment. And then it goes hours and days and weekends. And we care about really the seconds, maybe the minutes. The reason we don't care about years is because we're not gonna hang around for a year and wait for this thing to <laughs> roll over. But if you just let it power up and go, you can read from it, and it's awesome. Um, you can also write to these, though, because if you wanted to come up and go, you know what I want to do? I want to set the date. You would come in here and say, it's 2020, and it's June, and it's it's you know Monday, and it's 1.30 in the afternoon. You can set these up by writing to it, and then you can come. It'll just keep counting from there, and then you can just get the real time. So that's why they call it the real time. So it's pretty cool. These are read and write registers. So we can actually use this to like, let's write the seconds, or, you know, let's write the year 2020 in here uh, and then 
come back and see what it is, right? Or let's write uh, seconds to be 30 and then wait 10 seconds, come back and see if it went to 40. Okay, and then there's other things in here that are, you know, like alarms and stuff like that. Okay, so then that is, that's cool. Let's let's jump down. Uh, th there's a whole bunch of specifications that, that are on the device, voltage, currents, and stuff like that. But now we want to get to the part where what we really care about is this I squared C bus protocol. So here down here on 8.11.5, we finally get into the, the nitty gritty of what we need. First and foremost, here is this device's slave address. It is a seven bit and it is a seven bit address and it's 11010000. What does that look like in hex? Well, the lower eight, four bits are 1000, that's eight. And then the upper bits are 110. Well, if you converted that into four bit nibble, it'd be 0110, that's six. So the slave address for this in hex is 68. So that's what we have to put into the slave field when we send it. And then the final two diagrams that are of interest are, here is the protocol it expects when you write to it. Now look at this, this looks really familiar. Look at the write protocol. I, it expects the master to put out a start bit. Well, I know that. A seven bit slave address, not just any, but six, eight. Then it expects the write bit, then it will acknowledge then we send it the register address, then it will acknowledge, and then we send data. And notice that it has zero to end. So this supports bursting data. So if we want to continually write, we just write, it will acknowledge, write another time, it'll acknowledge, write another time. And since we're under master control, the master can continue to write as many bytes as possible, or as it wants, until it generates the stop bit, okay? Now, how many are we gonna write? We're the master. We need to understand that this, we're not going to write 100 bytes. This. It doesn't make sense. It's only got 20 registers. So we're only going to be writing a couple at a time, uh, if that. Okay, so then let's look at uh, the read. And here's what it wants. Look at this. It's telling us, you know what? Why don't we just go with the two packet read? <laughs> the first packet is going to be a, a, write, uh, a write message, which is going to say slave at start, slave address, write. The slave will acknowledge. Then you give it the register address you're going to read from. So you have to write the register address first, then it, it will acknowledge and it will stop. At that moment, the, the real-time clock slave here will be in a mode where it is getting ready, it is expecting the next message to be a read from that address that you wrote. So then you do a new message and you're gonna say start slave address 68, and then it's a read message, the slave acknowledges, and then it starts pumping data. So then it gives a byte. If the master is done, it will not acknowledge and end the message. But if it acknowledges, what's really cool is that it will auto increment to the next register address and send the next piece of data. And so the way that this is kind of drawn is it's, it's kind of indicating, it's like, it will give you as much as you want. You know, if you want to read all 20, go ahead. And it's up to the master to send the final knack or no acknowledge in order to tell the slave, I'm done, so don't send anything more because I'm about to generate the stop bit. Okay, so that's how that works. So, so this is great. So we're finally at a point where we have a slave and amazingly, it operates exactly how we've been learning about I squared C, if you can believe it. Okay, we are getting dang close to writing our first program. So uh, we're almost there. All right, as always, support my channel by subscribing and see you.